What is up everybody? My name is Shane Hennon. I'm a basketball skill development trainer and I have built out my own custom private basketball gym. Now I get a ton of messages on social media asking me how I did this. Where did I find this space? How much did it cost to build all this out and what went all into doing this and getting this done? So I'm going to make this video so I can send this to anybody that has those questions. I'm going to kind of cover everything that you guys are asking me in this one video. Now, I'm not going to go into crazy detail. I'm just going to kind of cover the basics of what things cost, the size of the facility, what it looks like, kind of everything that kind of went into my process of finding this place, and then financially what it took for me to actually get it and then to build it out. So let's just first talk about the actual building that we're in. This is an industrial warehouse space, um, and this was actually a diesel mechanic like truck repair shop before I got in here. So outside we got this big garage door, and then right here we just have this main entry into the actual building. And then right when you enter in, it's, it's a super simple setup. Um, we have an office space that we kind of have a little desk here, and then some places for people to sit. Um, not too big of a space, but to be honest, we don't really use it a whole lot. It's just kind of an entryway for people to kind of put their coats, their shoes, um, and for parents to just kind of hang out. Um, right when you walk in, you see some names on the boards. All of our college athletes that train with us that have played at the next level. Um, so just kind of a place where, you know, people can kind of put their things. You can maybe hang up some memorabilia. You can hang up, you know, boards with names on it like I've done. Um, just a nice little space for people to walk in and, and have some room to put their stuff down. And then going from this office space, we literally head right through this door and we're in the gym. We're in that uh, gym space area. Um, right when you get in here, there's a little bit of space here that we kind of put some black mats down. Um, our goal was to have a space where players can kind of, again, set their bags, um, stretch, roll out, whatever they want to do. Most of the kids um, and families will sit out here before their workouts and they'll, they'll set up and, and set their bags down. Um, rarely are they going to use that office space. Uh, but yeah, a lot of the kids like to come out here and just kind of watch the workout as they're kind of um, getting their shoes on and stuff like that. So um, we have this space. We put these rubber mats down. We'll talk about kind of the pricing of everything here. Um, as you can see, we have some bikes here to the left. My wife actually does cycling and yoga in this facility as well, and we'll talk about that later as well. But um, So we're using that, that kind of area to store her bikes. But um, put a bench down. This is actually a, a nice like custom-made bench for my sister. Um, right when we got this space, she was trying to figure out how she could help us out, and she does kind of projects like this. So she uh, she put this awesome bench together where uh, a bunch of kids will sit down and, and uh, get ready for their workout. So right off of everything here, we go right to the court space. Now, to some, that might seem a little tight, right? This space might seem a little bit small. But to be honest, I love having, you know, a smaller area in a, in a small office space because that doesn't allow for kids to kind of linger and hang around and kind of waste time. You walk in, you get your stuff on, and then you step on court and it's time to go. I actually prefer that type of environment over a huge lobby area, you know, and people are hanging out and just kind of twiddling their thumbs. I like this idea of this place is meant for you to work on your game, and that is completely it. So I, I love the setup. I was very happy with what we had here. Um, as you can see, we kind of have some dirt and some stuff going on. We live in the Midwest, so snow, salt, um, mud, all that stuff kind of gets gathered here. But that's why I really love kind of these, these rubber mats. Um, it kind of just puts that stuff right on there, takes it off your shoe, and then we can kind of sweep it out right out of this garage door. So like I said, very simple setup. You walk in, get your stuff off. There's a bathroom if you need it, and then you, right away you're on the court. So let's talk about the actual dimensions of this space. This is a 75 foot long and 26 foot wide space. This actual court space that we're on is that 26 feet wide and it's actually 53 feet long. So this space over here where we have all of our, you know, the bikes and equipment and stuff where people can kind of get set, um, takes up a little bit of that space, but gives us enough room to have a full 53 feet of court here. So let's take a look at the court here. Um, as you can see, we have a full high school three point line lane and free throw line. Um, the only space that it gets kind of tight is up here at the top, but it does give you enough room to stand here comfortably and to be able to shoot threes um, and get you kind of your spot shooting in. So I was happy. I understood that it might be a little bit tight, but again, 
we're doing small groups, we're doing individuals, we're not running huge camps here. Um, we're working on a lot of detailed stuff. So our groups are actually typically pretty small. Um, our group sizes will be anywhere from four to six, six kind of being the max. Yesterday we actually had nine kids in here, but we're playing three on three with the team kind of coming in. Um, so I'm looking at this space kind of when I walked in and it was, uh, it, obviously it was all cement. So I had to kind of envision, you know, where's the three point line? Where's the hoop gonna be? How far, you know, are these hoops gonna be off the wall, which was another tricky thing. Um, and then, it, you know, depending on how far they are, how does that affect how far away the three point line is and things like that. So that is something that if you are looking into your own space, just make sure you take in consideration, obviously the size of the space and where the lines would be um, and how far away your hoops are gonna be from the wall. One other quick thing with these hoops, um, they're mounted up on these walls and I had debated trying to maybe getting some you know, ground mounts where the pole kind of comes up through the ground. Um, but I actually like having them mounted um, just because it gives me some freedom down low um, and it just, to me, it looks a lot cleaner um, and a little bit more professional. The tricky part was, this is just very basic steel. It's not super strong, it's, it's pretty flimsy. So what they had to do is remove some of these steel panels out here, add some extra wood, and then put up kind of a support beam up there, especially on this wall, because this whole building <coughs> is the same spaces over and over and over. So I have neighbors next to me on both sides. So these conjoining walls aren't super thick. They're not super sturdy. So that was something that they had to kind of custom build into that. Now this wall over here, this main wall um, towards the end is actually a little bit more sturdy. So we didn't have to kind of put that extra beam up there like we did on the main hoop. Um, this one we could kind of just normally mount on there. So we kind of have this main um, area with the high school three point line that gives you uh, a three point line all the way around, um, which is great for individuals, great for you know groups of three um, or four. And then we also have this side where that three point line kind of gets cut off on the wings. Um, but it still gives us this wing to wing three point line with the top of the key, gives us that free throw line um, and gives us enough space that we can have those groups of six in here. So typically what we do um, when we run our groups of six, is we'll have a group of three kind of going at this hoop and then another group of three going on that opposite hoop. And uh, usually we'll have them going from kind of the wing area or kind of the elbow area, just breaking down footwork stuff. So this actually works perfect. Um, and what normally what we do is we'll have, like I said, we'll have that one group going right here and then we have another group going there. These guys are attacking middle to the right hand. These guys would be attacking middle to the left hand. And then after their reps are done, we just kind of flip sides. Right, so then that other group goes on this hoop, then the other group goes on this main hoop. So if I look at this place operational wise, this actually works perfect for me. Like I said, I run small group training, I run individual training where we're working on a lot of detail, we're breaking things down, and we're playing one-on-one, -on -one, two-on-two, two, or three-on-three -three type of things. We're not running massive camps, we're not running AU teams out of this. This place is literally built for you to come in, work on your game, and get out. Another great thing that this place has provided me um, other trainers is just the, uh, the ability to have a place uh, to produce content, right? Um, setting up a tripod in here, getting somebody to come film me in here, just kind of break things down has been tremendous for me. I've been able to grow my app. Um, I have services for coaches that were breaking down drills. Um, we've had partnerships develop with, with uh, Dr. Dish where we got a shooting machine in here. Um, this whole place is, you know, looking at, you know, a trainer's business outside of just their workouts. This is perfect uh, for content. Another quick thing about this place, we have 20 foot ceilings here. So ideally you're gonna wanna look for 20 foot ceilings if you're looking for your own space. Now you can see I have some of these lights and this main heater kind of going right through the middle. Um, those are probably hanging around 18, 19 feet. So you can actually get away with an 18 foot ceiling if you had to. I've, I've seen some people um, that have tighter spaces kind of like this that have 16 foot ceilings and they're still doing very well. Um, rarely, rarely do these lights or this heater ever get hit. Maybe once a month if you know, somebody kind of throws up a prayer you know, shot or anything like that. Um, but yeah, these, these never ever get hit. So ceiling height has been great for us. So now let's talk about how I found this place. Um, when I first started my business or restarted my business, I should say, um, I was renting space from another basketball academy. I was renting per hour. 
which is actually not a bad plan if you're a trainer out there, um, you know, trying to start your business. As long as you can match up how much money you're going to make and how much it costs you to, you know, rent that out. Um, but, you know, I wanted my own place. I wanted a place where I could hang my banner. I could create my content. I could have a key. Um, I could create partnerships with places like Dr. Dish. I wanted my own place just to really start building my business. And also, you know, one of the things I've noticed over the years is kids care less about what a place looks like, you know, as long as you have good training and they believe in you and you're getting them results, they will literally work out with you, you know, in a park if you needed to. Um, so I just wanted a place for myself. I also wanted a place for my kids to be able to call home um, and have a place that they can trust that, you know, is going to be open, going to be running. We don't got to worry about anybody else's schedule. We're not working around an AU team. This place is for training. So the spots that I look first were loopnet.com and crexy.com. They're both kind of industrial warehouse space um, databases where you can find all sorts of spaces similar to this. It's just like a basic real estate site. So if it's, it would be very similar to if you were looking for a house, right? It'd have the same type of listings, give you the details and the cost. Um, those two websites, LoopNet and Crexy, um, are good. They service kind of all over the country. That gave me the start. I, I started there and started looking my area, trying to figure out, you know, what kind of spaces are available? How much does it cost? Can I even, you know, imagine putting a gym in there? Is there AC? Is there heating? You know, all those things. So that's where I started. I started on those websites. And then after that, what I did is I found a couple places that I, you know, wanted to see um, in person, right? So you have to contact the real estate agent, whatever it is. A lot of those websites, um, they'll have real estate agents, they'll have, uh, you know, contact forms that you can reach out in case you want to see uh, more of that, more of that uh, location. Um, so after I toured them, you know, meeting this real estate agent, the one that I toured ended up not, you know, really fitting, but I made a relationship with this real estate agent and kind of told him, you know, what I was looking for, what my business did. And uh, he has some spaces that weren't on LoopNet and Crexy. And that's an important thing. It's important to look and to do your own research. Um, but a lot of times, if you can get in with a real estate agent or contact a real estate agent, um, they might have some places for you that actually aren't on those websites or that are gonna become open when somebody leaves in the next month. We ended up finding two spaces that we liked. Um, another place that I found was a little bit bigger, it was more expensive. Um, but it was kind of down a gravel road and you had to kind of drive in an area that, you know, there was a bunch of construction sites and a bunch of, you know, manufacturing buildings. Um, so I didn't really love the location. This one, you come right off the interstate on a paved road. There's a parking lot. And I'm actually neighbors with a buddy of mine that does uh, performance coaching, um, strength and conditioning, things like that. So I'm actually door to door with another business partner, which was awesome for me because we have a lot of kids that will come to myself you know, in his program. So they're able to literally open a door, walk two feet, and then come and work out here too. So this was my ideal location. Um, it was a little bit smaller. Like I said, 75 by 26, so I had to figure out um, if I could fit something in. Um, and one of the big things I had to do was figure out how many hoops can I get in here? And like we talked about, what is the layout gonna be? If the layout is like this, right, and the three-point line is there, you know, our, in, in my workouts, if they're going this way, are they gonna run into that other group? So I literally would come in here and walk through workouts and imagine where the hoops would be um, on some of my tours. Um, you know, and one thing I would suggest anybody that's, you know, thinking about doing this, ask about the walls, um, ask about the floor, make sure it is a flat surface. A lot of these places have drains. Um, and if, if we look at this, this whole space, this is all flat concrete underneath. There is a drain under those main mats. Sometimes they have the drain in the middle and that kind of creates a little bit of a divot, which you know, can affect your flooring. So I would ask about the walls because you might have to mount. And then I would ask where that drain is or try to find where that drain is and make sure it's not in the area that you're gonna be laying that floor down. So once we found our location, we had to make sure that we had the flooring and all the equipment lined up when we wanted to start our lease. So I think we started our lease October 1, and we had everything in here by like October 5 or October 6 or something like that, um, which was kind of a tight timeline. And uh, what I wanted to do was I didn't want to, you know, have a space 
very long that wasn't you know outfitted with the things that I needed. So basically what I'm saying is I didn't want this space to be empty and be paying for it when I can't run workouts because now I'm paying rent here, not running anything here, and then paying you know gym rent at a different gym and trying to run my workouts. So <clears throat> that was the trickiest part reaching out to the guy that had the hoops, reaching out to the person that had all the flooring and make sure, I can, make sure I can keep that timeline as short as possible. When can I get the floor in? When, are, when can the lines be painted? And how long is it gonna take me to get the hoops up? Um, matching that with the lease timing um, was tricky, uh, but you know we did it really well. And it, honestly, this floor that we have in here, they put it in, they got the lines painted, they got the hoops mounted, it probably took a week, tops. Um, so we were paying another place for workouts or for gym rent um, while this was getting built out for basically just a week, which is awesome. Um, that is something else that if you're going to do this and you're running a business right now, make sure you keep that in mind. It takes time for hoops to be delivered. It takes time for these mounts to be custom made, the floor to get in, the, the paint to dry. Um, just be kind of conscious of what that timeline looks like. Let's talk about cost. This place cost me $1,175 in rent every single month, which is very affordable. Um, and if I think about it in a summer day, if you're going kind of back to back hours, whether it's myself or somebody else, um, you can almost make that back in a single day. You can make your, your whole month's rent in a single day or two days if you really kind of went at it. So the cost for the overall rent is uh, very affordable. And it was something that, you know, I picked up, you know, specifically for that reason. It's just a, it's a very simple setup and it's a low cost monthly rent. Outside of rent, you will also have utilities costs. Our main cost right now is heating. This kind of bar that goes across the ceiling is our heating here. Um, there's a dial over here on the wall um, with a little thermometer so you can see how hot or cold it is in here. It does get pretty chilly here in the winter. Um, this place is pretty airtight. There are some kind of gaps in that door in this garage door where air kind of gets in. Um, but it does stay very warm, especially when you have the heat going. Um, so you'll have those utility costs. Like I said, ours is, ours is heating, um, but in the summertime, obviously we're not gonna have that. You have your water and then you have your electric. Um, roughly, I would say like 100 to $300 per month, depending on what time of the year it is. Like I said, the heating one in the winter can kind of crank your bill up a little bit. So you have your rent, and then you have that utilities cost. You're probably looking, you know, my rent is $1,175. I got those utilities. That could probably bring it up to around $1,300 or $1,400, depending on what month of the year it is. Let's talk about the actual equipment um, that we had to pay for to put in this gym. We're going to start with these uh, rubber mats. These are just basic, like, rubber horse mats that are meant for farms. Um, you could get them at a fleet farm. You can get them at a Menards or Home Depot. These are $25 a mat. So I think we spent around $650 um, just for kind of putting these mats down. Um, but to be honest, super worth it. I'd rather have these mats than just kind of that cement or anything else. They're very thick, super durable. Like I said before, you can kind of just brush this dirt right off of it. So um, these mats have been awesome for us. But yes, they were $650. Um, for all of these. Now let's talk about probably what a lot of people are wondering. Let's talk about the floor. Um, when I was thinking about the floor, obviously everybody would prefer wood floor. Um, but the thing is you have to be in a space that, you know, can supply a good environment for wood, right? Uh, wood can get wet, it can shrink, it can get kind of brittle in the cold, all sorts of things can happen. So if you're going to go with wood, there's going to be a lot of maintenance and you're going to have to have proper AC ventilation. There are other options like what I have in here. This is a sport court tile floor. Um, and I've been using stuff like this in other gyms. And I reached out to a couple of my athletes and kind of got their ideas. And they honestly, like I said before, they didn't really care. Um, they just wanted a place. They want to get in somewhere. And if, if you can uh, supply a floor that's safe, that's not going to hurt anybody, um, and it's a little bit more affordable and it's easier to kind of get in and take care of, I would suggest doing that. Not having a wood floor is not the end of the world. Um, and like I said, if you're gonna go that route, you better be prepared to kind of maintain it and have proper ventilation of air and moisture in and out of this place. So we went with a sport court. Um, we have a local dealer here in our area that actually um, has a bunch of this stuff and puts it in. So if I can get you guys a little bit closer to this stuff, 
These are just like tiles. And underneath, there's a, yep, see they kind of click off. There's a rubber mat that they put on to kind of get things to be a little bit softer. But like, look at that. It just kind of clicks right in. So when I, I actually came and watched them put this stuff in, and they basically were throwing them out and then just kicking them in kind of like Legos. So um, very simple setup. Uh, one thing that they actually had to do just because of the space, they had to kind of custom cut some of these ones that were closer to the wall to make sure they fit against the wall. Um, but yeah, it did not take very long at all. The awesome thing about this floor is it has some stick to it. Um, all you have to do is just sweep it daily just to get the dust and kind of the static off of it. Um, but it holds up so, so well. Like if I were to drop a dumbbell or something on this floor and it got, you know, damage one of the tiles, you just click the tile up, replace the tile and you're good to go. Um, but yeah, these have withstood, you know, a lot of stuff that shooting machine rolls out here a lot. These bikes that my wife uses, they roll out here a lot. We got chairs and all sorts of stuff on here and I have not seen any major damage happen to this floor. So I've been very happy with it. Um, and then we also have, you know, the paint on the floor that they had to custom make and measure. Um, you know, in the place that I went through, they kind of did everything. They made custom wall mounts. Um, they did the floor, they did the paint, um, they put it in, they kind of make custom gyms for people. So, uh, having that in my area was awesome. You could go on Google and just search sport court and you'll be able to find kind of dealers in your area. Um, I highly suggest it. Uh, the kids don't mind. I love it. It's got stick to it. Um, and it's really easy, very, very easy to maintain. So the thing with the floor, I'm talking to the dealer and basically what he said, he, get, he had some new stuff in stock, but he also had this kind of maple wood looking stuff in stock as well. And this is actually pre-used or pre-owned. Um, they used it for an event for some sort of tournament that was going on in our town and uh, basically just laid it out kind of in a like a lobby area just to kind of create like kind of a, a wood floor feeling for whoever was going to that game. Um, so they, you know, they used it on maybe two or three days of some random tournament here in town and then they brought it all back. And he said that he had some new stuff that he would look to get to me for a discount. And I was all over it because like I said, I'm trying to start a business. I'm not trying to have this major facility going on with all of these expenses. I want a place that I can shoot content. I want a place that my players can come immediately and, and get their work in. And I was hoping to get this done sooner or later. So I asked him about the discount. He kind of gave me a rate, but then he also pitched a new idea to me to basically rent to own this. So instead of paying, I think it was around like 8,000 or 8,500 for the whole thing, getting it installed and all that, all that upfront cost, he said I could rent it out. And I, my monthly rent for this floor right now is $425. And I think the deal is over a year and a half or two years, the floor becomes mine if I want it type of thing. So um, I still have the option just to kind of pay it out, but it's, you know, it was so nice to have this put in and not have that huge cost. So when you're looking at floor, if you can find a deal similar to that where, um, you know, they have some used stuff and then you can kind of check out the quality or if there's a monthly installment that you can pay instead of the upfront thing, I think that could help a lot of people, especially with those upfront costs because we'll get to some of this other stuff, but like these hoops and the wall pads and whatever else, it will cost you money um, and you're gonna have to pay that upfront. So LaFleur is $425 a month. To get this put into place, plus that rubber underlayment that's underneath this, the custom paint um, and the labor to do everything was $2,700. So I paid $2,700 for basically this to go in. Um, and then I have that $425 a month that I'll pay in with this. So if we think back to kind of what my monthly rent is, 1,175, and then you have a $200 to $250 to $300 utilities bill. So you're looking at, you know, probably $1,400. And then you have this, which is $425. Now you're around that $1,800 to $1,900. So typically my monthly, and that's kind of it. My monthly expenses um, with utilities, with rent and the floor is right around $1,800, um, which isn't bad. Some of the places I was looking at that were a little bit bigger were $1,800 flat just for the rent, not including utilities. So finding a place that was low rent was key for me because I knew that there would be other expenses that would add up. So let's talk about some other expenses. One big one was the hoops. 
Um, this was a little bit of a headache because uh, there was a shortage on hoops. There was a lot of people ordering hoops. Um, and I'm, I don't know why, maybe because of COVID and people are kind of putting their own gyms together. I have no idea. Um, but I found another dealer, not the person that put the floors in, but I reached out to somebody in a sporting goods place um, and they had a hoops dealer. So he found me these two awesome hoops, regulation size, 72 inches, um, breakaway rims, just very, very quality hoops that you would see in a, in a high school, in a, in a college, whatever it is. Um, the hoops were, I think, around $1,500 a piece. And that comes with the rims. That comes with that rubber um, padding underneath it. Um, so $1,500 for both of these hoops. Uh, and they would come in without the mounts. So these hoops just came in just backboard and that's it. I had to get these custom mounts kind of put in myself. So $1,500 for the hoops. And then looking at the mounts that had to be made, these are all custom made. Um, the, the mounts were, had to be manufactured, the seal had to be manufactured, plus you got to add the chain, you got to add the labor of actually putting it up on the wall. I have a set here and obviously another set on that hoop. Um, the custom mounts for the manufacturing and putting uh, it all up was around $2,300. Um, so you have that $3,000 or $3, for the two hoops and then you have $2,300 for the mounts. So you're looking at $5,300 just to get hoops and to put them up, which isn't terrible. And then honestly, this is kind of our last expense were these wall pads. Now, I also got a deal on the wall pads. Now, wall pads are tricky because um, they're a little bit more expensive um, than I thought they'd be. They're around $150 or so a pad, um, which I thought was kind of expensive. Um, I have six pads here. And uh, the deal that I got was, again, this guy that did the, the floor, had wall pads um, that he ordered that I think a forklift or something went through them and damaged them. So if we take a look at this one, you can see that there, there was a puncture hole here, a little puncture hole here. This one seems to be totally fine. And then there's a hole here. So he had these partially damaged pads that he wasn't using. If we go over here, I think there's like a little hole that must have been here. Um, and then these two seem to be fine too, but you can barely you know, even tell that they were damaged and he basically pitched to me, hey, I have these pads, I can't get rid of them, I got no place to put them, um, I'll give it to you for free as long as you pay for the install. So paying for the install was my only cost on the pads. I would probably would have had to pay close to $1,000 for all the pads plus the install. I ended up paying only $250 for those. So that is basically it to get this gym running. Again, I had to spend a lot of time looking for these places, I had to connect with a real estate agent, then you gotta get into the place and kind of draw out what the gym's gonna look like. And then matching the timeline of all the materials, the floor, the hoops, the pads, all those along with your lease um, timing is the trickiest part. Um, but it's definitely doable, man. This is, you know, if I think about how long it took to get our, our money back, I think we got it back halfway through the month. The, play, the fact that we had our own place, right? And we already had a strong base of kids and clientele that were ready to train, that were currently training with us. We just transferred them here. Now we're paying less than we would have if I was renting another place from another gym owner. And I have all the time to do whatever I want. I got the, I got the full schedule. I can shoot content here. I can do whatever I want. So um, definitely worth the, worth the investment. Um, some of the upfront costs could be a little bit scary. Um, but if you've saved enough or you have some sort of investor or um, something like that, it's super, super doable. That's all I have for you guys. Please. If this helped you a lot, drop a like on the video. Uh, consider subscribing. I'm going to pump out some more content on this YouTube channel um, that's going to help players, it's going to help trainers, coaches, anybody that's in the basketball world. I will have content for you. So please consider subscribing.